watching the news on Croatian television. Croatia's heavily indebted food and retail group Agrokor reached a standstill agreement with creditors on Friday. The deal should ease Agrokor's liquidity problems while the company restructures its debts. Creditors, including Russia's Sperbank and VTB Bank, are expected to inject new funds into the concern by Tuesday. In exchange, they will name new managers to top executive positions. We are working on this intensively and expect to wrap it up very soon. As Agrokor was securing a deal with creditors, Croatia's government passed a bill that aims to protect the economy and financial system from the collapse of a major company like Agrokor. Opponents of the bill have accused the government of tailoring the legislation to bail out Agrokor's owner, business tycoon Ivica Todoric. The HDZ's partners in government, most, say that the legislation is only a safety net. In Agrokor's case, the safeguard may not even need to be triggered if there is an arrangement between the owners, creditors and suppliers. All of those governing Croatia over the preceding 20 years have enabled Agrokor to become a monster that now poses a threat to the economy. Any responsible government would take the necessary steps to address the situation, and this government has done so and quite rapidly. But it remains to be seen whether this safety net will ever need to be activated. The leader of the Social Democrats, Davor Bernardic, has expressed concern that the government failed to consult the opposition in drafting the bill prompted by the Agrokor crisis. He is also skeptical about its implementation. It is difficult to tell if this law will guarantee that suppliers will be able to collect on the debts owed to them or if it will protect Agrokor's employees or those of their suppliers. The government must take responsibility. Finance Minister Maric must have known for some time about the situation in Agrokor. Croatia's tourism industry generated revenues of 8.4 billion euros from foreign visitors in 2016, according to the Croatian National Bank. This is an increase of 8.5 percent from 2015. Tourism revenue accounted for 18.9 percent of Croatia's GDP last year, a slight rise of 0.7 percent from 2015. It's been eight years since Croatia became the 28th member of NATO. Montenegro is slated to be the first country to join the alliance since then. At the very heart of NATO's spirit of solidarity is the principle of collective defense, which means that an attack on any one of the allies is considered an attack against all of them. There is no doubt that Croatia's ambitious effort to take on a series of commitments and carry them out on its own has been beneficial. Croatia committed to participate in peacekeeping missions, to control its own airspace and territorial waters. All of these commitments have proven helpful over the long run because they prevented defense cuts when the economic crisis set in. Voters in Serbia will head to the polls on Sunday in the first round of a presidential election. Prime Minister Aleksandar Vucic is the clear frontrunner among 11 candidates. But the campaign has been anything but boring, thanks to one candidate, Ljubiša Preletačević Beli, whose political career began as a joke, a way to poke fun at the establishment. Now, politicians and analysts are taking notice. One recent poll showed Preletačević running second behind Vucic. He's even pushed ultra-nationalist Vojislav Šešelj out of the spotlight and down to fifth place in the polls. Tens of thousands of Australians have been stranded by floodwaters after a powerful cyclone swept the country's east coast. Two people have died. Floodwaters have swept away roads and bridges. More than 100,000 homes have been left without electricity. Six major rivers have swelled to record levels. Authorities worry the floods could claim more victims as waters continue to rise. The important thing is that everyone should stay safe, take care, look out for your family, look out for your neighbours, but don't go into those flooded waters. That is the most dangerous part of these natural disasters, getting caught up in flood waters as we've seen. The president's office hosted today an open door event for some 170 young scientists excelling in science, technology, engineering and math, these so-called STEM areas. These budding scientists presented their discoveries, experiments, inventions and innovations in a bid to draw attention to the importance of putting more emphasis on the STEM curriculum in education. 
On this sunny spring day, the center of the coastal resort of Trikvenica was transformed into a vast flower garden. It's time for the 17th edition of the Trikvenica Flower Festival. Visitors can take in the bright colors and fragrances, try their hand at flower arranging, and ask vendors for advice on tending their own gardens. And now let's take a look at sports. There was plenty of action today with key games being played in handball and water polo. PPD Zagreb were eliminated from the EHF Champions League Final 16 after they lost a return game Saturday night to 2016 runners-up Vesprem, 19-29. After a heroic end run last week at home, losing to the Hungarian side by only one point, PPD managed to match their opponents only up to the eighth minute. After that, Vesprem pulled away and there was no doubt which team would advance to the quarterfinals. For Zagreb, just making it to the knockout stage of the tournament is a major achievement. In the final of the Adriatic Water Polo League tonight in Dubrovnik, Jug Croatia Osiguranje successfully defended their title, easily defeating Montenegrin side Jadran Herzegnovi. Sunday's forecast calls for mostly sunny and very warm weather throughout the country. There may be some moderate clouds on the northern coast and in Gorski Kotar, where there is a chance of light rain. The interior can expect light to moderate southeasterly and southwesterly breezes. On the coast, there will be a moderate to high southeasterly. Morning lows will range from 4 to 9 degrees in the interior and from 10 to 14 degrees on the coast. The day's highs will be between 18 and 24 degrees. Conditions will be less stable for most of next week. The interior will see partly cloudy skies with occasional rain and local showers. Temperatures will drop slightly from Tuesday on with moderate northerly and northeasterly winds. The Adriatic coast can expect variable weather starting on Monday. Showers are expected Monday in the north and from Tuesday to Thursday in Dalmatia. Sunday's moderate to high southeasterly wind will shift to a northeasterly direction overnight into Monday. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.